so, if Latoya Jackson is so crazy, why would Suzanne DePaz take the blueprint from Latoya Jackson's book? Hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you are not already a part of our book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Latoya Jackson. Bye. Latoya Jackson. Like the Beatles, each Jackson was stamped with a distinct personality. Jackie, handsome and athletic. Oh, I told oh, I love ooh. Tito, serious and quiet. An accomplished musician, Jermaine, the group's sex symbol. Okay. I didn't know that. Marlon, the adorable younger brother, and Michael, the charismatic prodigy. Countless sacks bulging with fan letters, school pictures, and stuffed animals flooded Motown's offices. Our home phone rang constantly from morning to night. It was, as they said, Jackson mania. Their youthful rise to stardom was the subject of articles in every major magazine. Because the brothers were family, the media regarded all the Jacksons as part of the act. Facts. Like the Osmonds. Oh, y'all, if y'all don't know what the Osmonds is, give me a minute. Child, it, all the ones I only really know about was Donnie and Marie. Just like the Jacksons were a big deal back then, so was Donnie and Marie Osmonds. It was the Osmonds. It was the Partridge family, the Brady Bunch. So even though they weren't based around singing and dancing, child, it was times that they would sing and dance. I think I'll take a walk outside now. da 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 that and and America Anna. wanted to know how Mr. and Mrs. Jackson raised such a wholesome bunch of kids. Not a single article of this time failed to mention my brother's politeness, clean cut living, and devotion to family. Our mother was portrayed as kind and gentle, a saint, and our father emerged as a benevolent mastermind. Most of what was written then was essentially true, if glossed up. Though unadorned, the Jackson story was the old-fashioned American dream saga Motown concocted. The public came to believe we'd grown up in a crime-infested ghetto or worse. Okay. After reading that one part, let me reread it to you. Most of what was written then was essentially true if glossed up. Though unadorned, the Jackson story was the old-fashioned American dream saga. Motown concocted a rags-to-riches fable about my family. Why would they use American dream as the title? This coming straight from Latoya. So I don't think it was her husband that forced her to write this book. I believe that it was Suzanne DePassy. So she can blame it on the husband all she wants to. But why would Suzanne DePassy even use that word, these words? Everything in the book is right, is in the movie. So if Latoya Jackson is so crazy, why would Suzanne DePassy take the blueprint from Latoya Jackson's book? Consequently, the public came to believe we'd grown up in a crime-infested ghetto, or worse. Since our parents had worked so hard to give us the best life they could then, mother often complained. Why do they say we lived in a ghetto when we didn't? But the label's publicists believed that stressing our humble origins would, would inspire other minority kids. Okay, I get it. I mean, I get it. The brothers were even given and rehearsed answers to reporters. Predictable inquiries. From the beginning, publicity chief Bob Jones warned journalists no questions about religion or politics. Not that my family had anything to hide except the reality of an abusive household. And looking at the ten of us posing together happily in our lavish new home, 
Who would have believed that? When you're related to a celebrity, five of them in this case, it's hard to truly comprehend the magnitude of their fame. To me, Jackie Tito, Jermaine Marlin, and Michael were just normal guys. At home, we still sang songs together and played practical jokes on one another. And as much as I adored them, there were still times when I thought they were creeps, probably making me the only girl in America who felt that way. I went to see them headline the Los Angeles Forum in June 1970, hearing 18,000 teenagers and preteens, some with their parents screaming hysterically for the Jackson 5, I looked around awestruck and wondered, this is for my brother? The pandemonium started the second the five of them hit the stage, and it never let up. Capitalizing on the Jackson 5's sudden popularity, Motown kept them on the road for the remainder of 1970, playing arenas and stadiums all over the country. Out of concern for my brother's safety, security had to be strengthened. My family hired a former policeman named Bill Bray to head the staff. So everything was cool till they headed around there to Buffalo, New York. All of a sudden, the boys are getting threatening calls to their room. And that's a strange thing because how do they know what rooms the boys are in? Child, the, the, the lady downstairs that the clerk could tell somebody what rooms they in, child. But then when you think about it, if they're buying rooms for the Jackson 5 and the entourage, how do they know which room the boys are in specifically? And I'm sure they try to keep that under wraps. Joseph phoned home to tell us what happened. Just cancel the show, mother pleaded. Don't let the boys go on stage. There was no need to argue and the show was called off. However, in years to come, my brothers bravely performed in the face of such threats. Ironically, our restrictive upbringing probably helped my brothers adapt to the lonely life of touring, which every day follows a fixed routine only in a different city. On days off, the guys hibernated in their rooms because venturing outside was just too complicated. Now, most male singers can easily entertain themselves in their rooms with women. God knows Jackie, Tito, Jermaine, Marlon, and Michael could have had their pick of willing young girls. But even Houdini couldn't have penetrated the barriers Motown and Joseph constructed around them. No one was allowed near unless pre-approved by security. To elude resourceful fans, they made up code names for one another and a Jackson knock. In addition to the guards posted in the hotel hallways, Joseph checked each room himself to make sure that my brother and only my brothers were inside. He also did a strange thing at night while the guys were sleeping. He brought girls into their rooms to gawk at them. Pause. Now, Latoya's like, I'm not going to speculate. Girl, that's what the hell you write a tell-all book for is to speculate. Don't forget, Joseph Jackson is a dirty all right. But I believe when Joe Jackson saw something that he wanted, you know, I'm the Jackson's father, right? No, you're not. You're not their daddy. Yeah, I'm their father. You don't believe me? Come on. Let's see. While Jermaine later suggested that he snuck girls in, that's simply not true. If they had, Motown executives would have thrown a fit. I believe that. Okay, I'm going to do some commentary on this, but let me continue reading. Scandal and paternity suits, whether genuine or not, might have ruined the guy's squeaky clean image. In itself, a valuable asset. Truth was, the company had nothing to worry about. Though my parents never discussed sex with any of us, they communicated their values quite clearly. We were not to date unless serious about marriage. Not surprisingly, my brothers dated very little until their late teens. Could you imagine the scares that they would have with pregnancy? We never knew that the new edition had children by the time they was like 14, 15 years old. I think it was either Bobby first or Ralph first. I don't know. Could you imagine as a teenage girl finding out that your crush is already hunching? As a little girl, you probably like, oh, I need to start hunching because my crush already has a child. I mean, you get children by hunching. Maybe I need to hunch. So you, you can't put that into the 
public's eye. It's a whole yeah. bunch of girls that were saying that they were still virgins. And I get it. I understand because if your idol is in, then maybe you should be hunching too. So I'm inclined to believe that they were lying about sneaking girls in their room. Not surprisingly, my brothers dated very little until their late teens. At 18, Jackie actually had a girlfriend, but he was allowed to see her only in our home for one hour. Come eight o'clock, Joseph rudely ordered her to go home. My father was unhappy with several of the girls Jackie dated and with Tito's girlfriend. He didn't like one because she wasn't black and assumed all the rest were only after his son's money. Joseph's suspicions weren't limited to gold digging girlfriends. He and mother distrusted all outsiders to a certain extent with good reason. I know of one instance where a popular teen group manager introduced them to drugs because it made them easier to control. Who you think it is, y'all? A teen group back then around the same age as... Was it the, the, the barges? Others are deprived of proper guidance and education, so they lag far behind kids their age. The manager of one teen act we invited to dinner called ahead and requested we serve only finger foods like hot dogs and hamburgers to spare his clients embarrassment. It seems they'd never learned how to use silverware. Seeing things like this later made us appreciate the positive aspects of our parents and Motown's protection during those crucial formative years. Unlike many less fortunate kids in show business, the Jackson 5 always had the best education possible. Tudor rode fine, accompanying them on the road to television rehearsals and taping. In just one year, the Jackson 5 had released four albums, three of which sold over one million copies each, appeared on dozens of television shows, and had become the new decade's preeminent black stars. The guys had exceeded their and Joseph's wildest dreams with no end in sight. Soon after their fifth single, Mama's Pearl, went to number two in early 1971, our family moved to Beverly Hills. Frank Sinatra lived nearby, as did Michael's ultimate idol, Fred Astaire, to whom he'd later dedicate Moonwalk. One day, we learned that the legendary dancer, then about 72, wanted to meet Michael. My brother was speechless. For me, meeting Diana Ross was like having an audience with the queen. I'd grown up watching the Supremes on television and thought she was the epitome of chic. The first time Diana visited our house, I couldn't get over how beautiful she was, but also how surprisingly small. Likewise, when Michael first met Smokey Robinson, all he could talk about afterwards was Smokey's hands. They were so soft, Latoya. I couldn't believe it. He marveled. I can believe Smokey Robinson got soft hands. Ooh, and probably soft lips to this day. I bet you he ain't got a callus nowhere, not on his big toe, not on his elbow. I bet you Smokey Robinson's hands feel like a cardiologist. We loved the Beverly Hills house, which had a swimming pool and a large practice room for rehearsals. But the grounds were overrun by rattlesnakes that came down from the hills. One day, a rattler snuck up on Michael by the pool. Fortunately, a visitor pushed my brother into the water just as it was about to strike, probably saving his life. Shh, they were saving the bag, baby. That's it, mother declared. We have to move. I can't take this anymore. It's too dangerous. Despite her outwardly meek demeanor, she can be firm. She instructed Joseph to find us another house, specifying only that it be spacious and located in Beverly Hills. My father, having his own ideas, ignored her. What initially attracted my father to the rambling modern ranch-style home were the orange trees that covered the two and a half acres. Joe Jackson, like I said, I always have a problem with the abuse, okay? I don't know what it is, but some people do not know how to control themselves when it comes down to disciplining their children. I always say, if you are not sure that you're not beating your child out of anger towards them or somebody else, don't beat them. 
just tell them go in their room and sit there until you figure it out. Sometimes people be so angry when they come through the door that they got to let that anger out. And sometimes they do it on their children. But putting that aside, what I will always say about Joseph is that no matter how rich his children got, he maintained his intent on trying to keep his children humble. Okay, yeah, we rich and famous, all right? And we got the money to buy all these houses, but you are no better than the rest of these kids. When we moved in, there were six bedrooms, yet we younger kids continued to double and triple up. Janet and I and Michael, Randy, and Marlon. The expansive property had a separate guest house, a playhouse. Remember that guest house, child? That's where in the movie, Joe Jackson was around there taking all his calls. When we moved in, there were six bedrooms, yet we younger kids continued to double and triple up. Janet and I and Michael, Randy, and Marlon. The expansive property had a separate guest house, a playhouse, servants' quarters, a pool, immaculately manicured grounds, and bas and basketball and badminton courts. Over time, we made many improvements, such as the recording studio my foresighted father had added on so his sons could practice composing and recording without incurring studio costs at Motown. My siblings and I went out even less than we had in Indiana. California's legal driving age is 16, but except for Jermaine, none of us were allowed to drive a car until much later. My father's obsession with keeping us isolated was to continue all our lives. Those of us who remained at home through the 70s, though adults, were still not allowed to have private phone lines. The older brothers hung out with a group of kids nicknamed the Motown Babies, consisting of Barry Gordy's children, Diana Ross's younger brothers, and the teenaged offspring of other label executives and artists. Michael, Randy, Marlon, Janet, and I usually stayed home, clinging to one another more than ever. Following a summer 1971 tour that took the Jackson 5 to more than 40 cities, Motown released 13-year-old Michael's first solo single, the million selling got to be there. Undeniably, Michael overshadowed his brothers. Anybody, anybody. 